guy. I don't know. I'm, I'm not promising it's going to be on this one. Sometimes you get... Uh, and I, I talk about this a lot in Souls. There's some bosses you need to have a 9 or a 10 out of 10 performance to beat. There's some bosses you need to have a 3 out of 10 performance to beat. I think this guy, we need about a 7. We need a combination of skill and luck. Malf says, I just want you to know the local Greek place is Pog. I'm Pog for you. Man, it's been so long since I've eaten Greek food. It's the ideal type of cuisine if you want to eat every type of carbohydrate in the same meal. Little bread, little potato, little rice. Sometimes you got some chickpeas involved in it. You know what? Get me off of the horse. Thank you. Great start here. What about Spanakopita? Sp Spakanapita? I don't know. It's... it's. I mean, I, I know this is a very common take. It might be my favorite Outcast album. That's fine. I knew that was coming. Please get out of there. I lived... I did not get one-tapped by the overhead smash. That's new. I just need it. Thank you. I just like to get in your... in your knee hole. Today. A quick jump? Okay, run. No, you're fine. There we go. Perfect pathing. The perfect smoky line. Run. Horse is okay. The horse is just chilling. On zero HP. No. No, oh, motherfucker. Okay, that's fine. As long as we sip, don't even look at him. He can only affect you if you know he exists. Yes, I would like to. Thank you. What, like that hurts? How did I not get hit there? Also, machine gun jubblies. How did I miss those? Mm -hmm. See you in hell. Okay, we just gotta get in that knee crevice. Don't even need to lock on. Okay, nice shot, honestly. You put some respect on that. That's fine. Honestly, I think we sip up here. He has so many one-shot attacks. Right in there! My insane pace! Okay, he might do a two-tapper. Two-tapper. We took the long way home on that one. Not scared? Just one more hit. Dude, we're in there. He's looking a little spooky, though. Just get in there! You got him! You got to Pay out the believers! I told you, first try. Just needed to empty the bladder. And we're chilling. This is mouth got me thinking about that... That Greek food. Oh, the... The dragon halberd. So original. The dragon halberd. It was the cheese. You can't hurt me. Not with my cheese helmet. Something in the water? America's scar seal. Raises attributes, but also increases damage taken. Ooh! Two of those? Is this the end of this zone? Not even close. We need to find the... Oh, it's, it's only for mages. Okay, thank you, thank you. Great intel, thank you. That's insane intel. I lived. Any statues of grace around? The OMG me. Every time. Gets me every time. Teleport to one? No, I wanna... 
I want to grow up to be be a debaser. A golden seed that's huge. That's outrageous. Sixteen thousand runes, like I, I know how this sounds. It's not that serious though. Like legitimately, item ahead. Item ahead. Cave ahead. That's one level right now. Grace? Another rune arc? Okay. They were not wrong. Cave ahead. This is not a substantial amount of runes. I'm not even sweating it, man. I told you, I can get 70,000 runes in a half hour as long as I don't die. You should honestly be thanking me. Because when I had those 70,000 runes in my pocket, I never even considered using them without letting chat see the bounty. That seems resinous to me. Another brazier. I don't really think we need the farm, though. Like, at least right now. I feel like we're essentially... I, I feel like we're level appropriate. Help. Don't let him get in your head. I'm Sipless, huh? Sipless in Seattle? Hold on. Hold on. I'm not Sipless in Seattle. I'm gonna die. For sure. <laughs> there is no doubt. Simplis and Siafra. It's all right. Two quick horse rides. We're back there. Look, it's a, it's a short jaunt. They legit still using the same rats. Yeah, but I kind of I like it. It's like, it's familiar. What the hell? We can't go back to the statue. You passed the gray statue. Uh, that's some information that would have been useful to me yesterday. Likely dog. I realize, dude, like, this is actually the worst that Twitter has ever been, broadly. Um, partly because of the war, obviously. But also partly because um, all day, every day, I only see uh, discussions about Elden Ring. Nice try. That are like... Uh, they're, they're, I'm trying to think of the right way to describe it. I never see anybody on my timeline say Dark Souls should be a less accessible game. What I do see a lot of is people needlessly picking fights with people who have no influence whatsoever. And quote tweeting people who are like, you know, they, they have my opinion, which is that the spirit of Dark Souls is that you should only use a big hammer and like smack things. And I'm always like, it's like literally 1% of the motherfuckers are, out there are responsible for like 99% of the arguments. I'm not a part of it at all. You should play Dark Souls games however you like to play Dark Souls games. I'm not going to argue with you. It's a toy. You know, if you... Oh, your, your action figures aren't being posed right. You're not using the Kung Fu grip. Who cares? But that's the thing, is that, you know, people, they'll, they'll gaslight you into thinking that you're being a part of it. And now I'm like, I'm... Just so people are aware, my experience with Dark Souls is this, 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 but I don't really care how any... It's like it doesn't even matter. It's a toy. Stop shooting me? What's your... You got infinite range, huh? I don't want to be here anymore. This is the wrong way? Uh, yeah, I wanted to get my souls back. 
Okay, hold on. Take me, take me back to the Shyafra Riverbank for now. Let's at least get one level of it. Every time a From game comes out, this happens. I, I, I would, I, I, sorry, I didn't read the second part of what you said, which makes it puts it in a different context. I wish people would just stop engaging with it. I couldn't agree more, cause like, I mean, there's a big like, who cares, to it for one. But then there's also like, it's literally only people who have like, you know, uh, Soul of Cinder avatars that are like, no, the games, if anything, they should remove normal mode and make the game more difficult. And it's always like, then like, you know, game director for God of War is like, actually, um, this is what it should really be like. And I'm like, well, what? It's literally, it's beneath you. Like, I guess it's good to, like, get that you're using your influence to get the lesson out there, but, like, you're getting s all that for that. Are you kidding me? You're getting sucked into, like, bad faith arguments. Literally, like, okay, sure. <laughs> like, some 13-year-old kid is like, I think that... I can't believe that Aloy has some facial hair, and then, like, everybody on Earth is like, tell me you've never been close to a woman. And I'm like... That's a 13-year-old kid. Like, I'm obviously you're right, but at the same time, like, what? But why? Is this really a productive use of everybody's time? Okay, I'm not worried about 5,000 souls. I mean, it's the classic, like, uh, and, and this has been true on Twitter for, like, I can get those. Forever? There's like, people are like, we need to educate them. Like, we can't let these bad takes <laughs> exist out here unopposed. Like, the people that are, they're quote tweeting have like three followers. And then they're quote tweeting their tweet to like 300,000 people. And I'm like, that, the, their take would not have ever gotten any traction. Nobody would have known that their take would have existed if it hadn't been spotlighted. Like, if, if somebody has, you know, 500,000 followers and they say something idiotic, maybe push back a little bit, don't get me wrong. But if somebody's just like a total, like, not, not to say that they're a nobody in life, but if they're like a nobody on Twitter and they have a bad opinion, just leave them be. Like, why are you... It, you have a responsibility when you have like an audience of, let's say you have 250,000 followers on Twitter, you're basically choosing to make 50,000 people mad anytime you quote tweet someone else's bullshit. I think you have a responsibility to the populace to be responsible with that. Why don't you just, like, instead of doing that, just endlessly retweet the video of Chris Farley at the Blackhawks game where he just gets onto the ice and then falls down and gets up and then falls down and then gets up and then falls down. You could do that instead. Don't hit me. I'm just here to light the brazier. Don't be a piece. I'm just going to get off my horse real quick, if you don't mind. I think we've lit four so far. Like, I might say some things on stream that make you mad, but that's because there's, like, literally no filter. As soon as something pops into my head, it immediately is said. <laughs> Nearby Bonnie? Let's go. Aye! So true! But I think I'm a very safe Twitter follower. Because I will never be like, can you believe this shit? And then quote tweet, like, some moron who might be like 15 years old who's like i wish all video game ladies had big titties i'm never gonna quote tweet that and be like i can't believe people actually believe that people don't actually believe that like little kids and fucking weird creeps believe that 
You wouldn't have encountered them if, if you weren't seeking them out. It's not, it's not targeted towards you. You don't do that on Twitter either. You don't, you don't find someone you disagree with and then quote tweet them. Um, well, you know, you're entitled to, to think that. I will never spotlight quote tweet you on Twitter. She's, she said her piece. And that's your opinion. I may not agree with you or care, <laughs> but I defend to the death your right to say it. It's called Canada's First Amendment. Get it right, sweetheart. I think your problem is that you assume they're kids. No, like, okay, when I say kids, I'm actually being overly generous to the people with these bad takes. Because you're right, they could be adults, but if they're adults with a juvenile mind, quite frankly, that's even worse for them. Like, now you're just bullying someone who uh, admittedly has a bad take, but they're a 35-year-old with the opinions of a 15-year-old who has a subscription to Maxim magazine. That's actually, like, they need to be protected. Not because their opinions are good, but rather because... Oh, hello. Um, they don't know what they're doing. I pushed his square. Off. I just, I don't know. I think there's like a... I, like, I still use Twitter, uh, despite having problems with it. But I don't actually, like, get rage-baited by Twitter on much, uh, much anymore. If anything, it's, like, second-order rage bait. Like, I, I think I'm pretty good about acknowledging within myself that, you know, for a while, me and everybody else on the platform was in a pattern of, like, hey, I'm just gonna log in because I'm addicted to uh, anger for a little bit, and then just get angry and go, can you believe people actually believe this? And then, like, log off and, like, let it ruin, like, 15 minutes of my day or something like that. Son of a... But now, I only get annoyed when I log into Twitter, and then someone I follow because of, like, their work in the games industry is, like, can you believe what this idiot who lives in, you know, Utah said? And I'm like, I'm out of here. There, I had a couple of experiences recently where I was like, you know, I haven't seen a tweet from this person in a while. I wonder if I accidentally unfollowed them. And then I went to their Twitter account and I was like, oh, I've had them muted. Since the, you know, the eighth year of the 2020 uh, election cycle. Then you bring it to chat and rage? This is not raging, this is just a conversation. If I was raging, I would be suggesting you had WikiHow articles open for how to hold hands with a girl. Google, hey Google, search proper hand-holding technique for girl have crush on. How many dates before acceptable to hold hands? Where does this take me? How to maintain eye contact. I love that that Sips, or not Sips, sorry, that Squeak story. Wait a minute, this is the damn start. You can't fool me. The Squeak story that as a child, his dad looked up his search history and he had magic tricks to make friends in his, uh, in his search history. That shit is so funny. The mind of a child is so innocent. Magic tricks to make friends. Oh, man. It's too pure. It's You're not wrong. I would like to travel to another location, please. Who didn't look that up, though? Any squeak subs in the chat? So true. My runes.
You hear that? I'll fight any enemy as long as they don't have a bow or an arrow. What the hell are you doing? Are you happy and you know it and you really want to show it? Is that what you're doing over there? I still remember my first naughty search. I don't, but uh, my mom has told me that in uh, second grade, summer vacation, I went to something called Cyber Sports Camp at, at one of the local high schools. And it was like half... I mean, all this stuff for like little kids is all the same, right? It's like, let's trick you into doing a little bit of physical activity and socialization. So like half the day we would like play basketball or something like that. And then half of the day we would play Oregon Trail and like learn how to use a web browser and stuff like that. Keep in mind, this was in like 1997 maybe. So like the internet was still very much in its infancy. And definitely my mom has told me the story about how I came home from like day one of cyber sports camp. And I was like, Mom, what's sex? And then she said, how do you know what that is? And I said, some of the other kids at cyber sports camp were searching sex. Great horned headband. Were searching sex on Netscape Navigator. Well... Maybe this is five or six? Some of the other kids? I do, I have a deep memory as well. I, I, I can't draw a specificity to it, but I definitely have like a deep memory of uh, our teacher typing something in and you got, I don't think they were doing anything weird, just to be clear. Again, this is in a different era of the internet. There were probably like less than 10,000 websites on the entire internet. But, but they were like, you see, like when you use the internet, you can type in whatever you want and there'll probably be a website for it. And then he typed in, I don't even know, it was probably like, like hockey.com or something like that. And then I just remember like a bunch of naked ladies appearing on the screen and then him being like, yeah, I should have known that that could have happened. Sorry. I'm not scared. I also remember that... And I don't know if we've ever found this game, okay? What the hell? But I remember that we used to play this game and it wasn't like Oregon Trail. But it was kind of similar, like, I mean, graphics and, and time period. And you would, like, you were trying to start, like, a settlement. You would plant uh, berries, and then you'd have to, like, chase bees away. And you could, like, drive a wagon, and you could, you know, I, I don't really remember all of it. But I do remember that it had something very cool. Which was, you would like do this stuff. It was almost set up like a mobile game, but 20 years before they reached any degree of like cultural nascence, right? Beautiful. So true. Like, uh, you would plant your berries and stuff, and then you'd, you wouldn't be able to play the game until, uh, you know, the next time you had cyber sports camp. Like, the next day. I'm using it. One rule of keys, man. You got a key, you use it. And then you would log back in. What the heck? And all of your berries over the course of like 24 hours would have been eaten by bees and stuff like that. It was like a game where they, it, it, they had the illusion of something happening like while you were not there, like there was some persistence. It was very cool. Cyber sports camp is still racking my brain. I mean, you know, it was a different time. It was a different time. A gray statue. How about that?
Not even close. I mean, I really want to finish this section. <laughs> I would really like to, to light all these braziers before the stream ends today. Eight of anything is too much to keep in my head. How much will you restrict your daughter's internet usage? I don't know. Um, it's tough, you know? I feel like everybody I knew that had like one family computer and they were only allowed to use the internet for an hour a day uh, with their dad watching over their shoulder turned into a total freak show once they got some independence in university. But at the same time, I also feel like Unfettered access, unsupervised to the internet from a young age is how you end up with Twitch chat. So that's like, I'm torn. I think, you know, there's a grace right here. It's a delicate balance. I don't have a good answer. I don't think there is a great answer. I think you just gotta, you know, it's just trade-offs. Good parental controls, I totally think. Like, I don't know, I, I, not everybody agrees with me on this. I'm not gonna let my kid watch R-rated movies when they're like five years old. Not because like, I'm worried about them seeing a naked human body, but I am worried about like, them seeing like a uh, a man's head explode while he reads the news? I don't think it has, like, permanent psychological trauma necessary, necessarily. But, like, I do think it could lead to some serious nightmares, which would just, like, make your life harder as a, as a parent. <laughs> For sure. Kids love scanners. It's true, it's true. Ed, kids love David Cronenberg for some reason. Like, I got fucked up by some PG-13 movies when I was a kid. Independence Day, as we talked about. Lost in Space. Like, a movie doesn't need to be rated R to mess with a kid. Super Mario Brothers movie. Uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Eight-legged freaks scared the crap out of me. I was lucky enough to see that at an age where I was like a little, I was like, I know this is supposed to be a comedy, but I'm still going to get like a little scared, but that's okay. Can we do like one at a time? Nope. You mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. You mess with Spider-Man, you mess with New York City. Evil Dead scared the crap out of me. Yeah, you shouldn't be watch- I mean, that's not your fault. But, like, you definitely should not be watching Evil Dead when you're, like, under the age of 12. I mean, some kids can take it, some kids can't, but, like... I'm less concerned about, though, like, the content of what, um, and again, this is all just, I mean, this is, no plan survives contact with the enemy, you know what I mean? So, like, right now, I'm like, this is what I'm gonna do, but in reality, we were also like, we're not gonna let our daughter, like, look at an electronic screen until she's two years old, and then, you know... The whole family got sick a hundred times in November, and we're like, let's buy some Sesame Street seasons. Because <laughs> otherwise we're going to lose our fucking minds. So it's, it's, there's a, a balance that has to be struck, okay, in the world of reality. And I'm less concerned about content necessarily. I think that's like the easy stuff to manage. I really hoped that was the final brazier, but whatever. Um, and way more... 
maybe concerned is not the right word, but way more like it's the medium that she uh, watches that I want to pay more attention to. Because like, as an adult, I'm not judging your, your choices at all. But uh, I think a, for a, a young child, watching YouTube is like, I'm very cynical about it. Just because it's cut to like not require you to have an attention span. Especially like YouTube kids videos. I'm sure there's some people making like some, some high quality stuff, but the stuff that the algorithm seems to, to deign appropriate, like they just cut, 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 cut. And I'm like, you can't, uh, I think it's important that a, a child develops like the ability to have an attention span because there's already like enough distractions in the real world. Like you need to have a good attention span to begin with just to be easily distracted these days. So that's why we're starting her on true crime documentaries. I'm going to make her watch Margin Call. Not a single person raises their voice for the entirety of the of the movie. We've already been here. Okay, how are we doing on flasks? Absolutely crushing it. We've lit that brazier. Stanley Tucci when he's being let go. I think he does say go fuck yourself. So I, maybe I won't let her see that. But on the other hand, I bet if I showed her margin call right now and she saw Stanley Tucci, she would be like Dada. And I would be like, you're damn right. You're damn, I should be so lucky. Stink. Okay, Jeremy Irons does raise his voice a little bit. You're not wrong. Margin Call is kind of... It's fucked up how good the cast of that movie is for something that was destined to make like $8 million at the box office. Penn Badgley, Zachary Quinto, Kevin Spacey, Demi Moore, Jeremy Irons. Jeremy's Iron. Um... I'm in hell. Stanley Tucci. Did I say Jeremy's iron? You gotta admit, it's a lot of, like, pretty marquee actors for a movie that was destined to make no money. Yeah, like, I don't really mind, like, if my daughter swears. There's... I guess you just gotta teach your kid, like, there's some places that, uh, like, you can't do it. Like, I don't wanna... I don't want her to... Say the F word in, like, second grade, and then... Because then it's, like, your parenting choice is now becoming... It's... Affecting other people's parenting choices, which is not fair. Or at least not desirable, even though it's inevitably going to happen at some point. Please tell me, there must be like a brazier around here, right? But in on like a personal level, I think... Uh, I mean, the, the idea of caring about swearing is very funny to me. They're all downstairs. Okay, it's fine. Teleport me back. I'll, t I'll go back to the riverbank. That's why I laughed at all those, like, um, the common sense media reviews of uncut gems that were like... Okay, hug the right. Hug the right. Thank you. We're only missing three? Holy cow. I thought we were missing one. But uh, those common sense media reviews of uncut gems where people were like, I had to walk out of the theater, they said the F word so much. I'm like, you're a grown adult. 
I meant left, I'm sorry. Okay, well, you know what? I don't think we've been here yet. I'll, I'll take a peek anyway up here. No, nothing of value was lost. Like, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you this. It's your own, it's your own life. Don't let me judge you too much, but... If you're like 50 years old and you have to leave the theater because they're saying the F word too much, you actually gotta grow up. You don't have to say it yourself, but like the idea that you would be so offended by like the F word is, is very humorous to me when you're talking about an adult. Purple items? What a waste. Inverted Hawk Heater Shield. Liar ahead. I could have told you that. When it comes to school sick days, where do you think you're going to land? You're going to get me in trouble. I hope that we're getting back to the... I mean, within the next few years at least. Back to the era of, like, your kid goes to school unless they're throwing up. <laughs> Before I had a kid, I was like, that's an idiot take. Um, now I'm like, nah, man, that's the way it should be. I don't know if that's actually true, if that's the way that it so-called should be, but... Like... Oh, there's one. Good intel, thank you. The thing is, like... Whoops, that's the wrong button. Public health is super important, okay? But if we're gonna have kids staying home from school, this is not COVID-related, you know, this is just, like, a cold-related. But if we're gonna have kids staying home from school when they just got, like, a runny nose, then we have to start giving adults, like... 50 sick days a year. If they have kids. Because other it, it's otherwise not workable with, like, the current system. Hey, Tevil Deck, thank you as well. Thank you. Because, like, Kate and I are getting close to our... I mean, limit is not the right word, obviously. Like, you know, you got to do what you got to do. But the fact that we have... Like, half of our weeks since the first week of November have been screwed up by illness. And some of those illnesses were, like, I mean, not serious, but, like, some of them were not great. Uh, and some of them were just, like, like, this time, she had a little bit of a runny nose, right? She coughed twice a day, and she sneezed twice a day. She's not able to go to daycare for two weeks. Cuts, you know, my ability to be productive in half. Cuts Kate's ability to be productive by, like, 80%. Uh, times 0 0.5 multiplied by the amount of days since November. Like, it's a, it's a bit of a grind, for sure. Now, I understand with COVID, it's better safe than sorry. Like, you gotta... You don't know, like... If a runny nose is just the cold, or if the runny nose is actually, like, part of the global pandemic. Left again. Thank you. Thank you. But, I, I mean, believe it or not, I think it's a base take, because it mostly comes from, like, a place of sympathy with, like, other people. Like, one of the kids that's at the daycare, like, her, her mom is a single mom. How is she supposed to, like, keep her kid home from, from daycare or school when her kid has a runny nose when she also has a job? Like... So something's gotta give. Please? Please? Just pull up your bootstraps. <laughs> oh, past the... Okay, past this. That's why I think, like, honestly, I'm very jealous of people 
I, jealous is a bad word. Like, I have it pretty easy, don't get me wrong. But uh, I'm jealous of people who live in, like, a, a shared, like, everybody loves Raymond family situation. Where they have, like, uh, you know, multiple generations living in the same household. This is the last brazier, please. Please. Like, I'm sure it would be annoying at times, like, to give up some of that independence. But at the same time, to be like, hey, mom, uh, the baby's got a runny nose today. Any chance you could just watch her while I get my work done? <laughs> And she would be like, yes, in her spirit, she would be like, Pog, I get to spend more time with my grandchild. I would be like, yo, like that's a dream come true. We finally did it. I can't believe it. Boss fights? I did not miss one. Look at this. This looks like the set of Legends of the Hidden Temple. Or my mom could stream for me. Hey mom, the baby's sick. Can you stream for me today? Anyway, so that's what... It, in a perfect world, I think, you know, when your child is like visibly sick... Obviously, I think it makes sense. I'm going to reach out and touch Grace real quick. Um, to keep them home. With the way that the current world is structured, I think that that's an impossible ideal to, uh, to possibly match. Dog ahead. The ancestral spirit. I'm not scared. It is insane to think back, though. I mean, again, we're, we're in weird times, you know? It's hard to, like... As much as, like, the before times seem crazy flippant with respect to, like, how people treated any symptoms of the cold or flu, you also got to acknowledge we're in, a like, a COVID bubble where we're... I, let's not say over paranoid about it necessarily, but certainly like much more concerned about that stuff than we've ever been before. And that might be warping like the current lens that we're looking at it through. Like prior to two years ago, I was never looking at somebody that sneezed in public and going like, you are a fucking bioterrorist. <laughs> and you know, you would go to school and there would be like a kid that's visibly ill. You wouldn't be like, oh no, you're gonna get me sick. You would just be like, oh, you know, Kenneth is sick or whatever. I hope he gets better. Now, he probably got you sick, and we just treated it as like, uh, you know, the, the cost of doing business. But definitely the attitude has changed a lot. I'm not scared. You got ice breath? Who cares, man? Ice breath. You missed. So, like, for now, I totally understand. I'm also not a public health official or an epidemiologist or a doctor of any sort. It's probably worth noting. <laughs> I'm hoping that, you know, the COVID situation in the next few years gets handled to the extent that, you know, I don't feel like if somebody brings a kid with a runny nose to daycare, thus meaning that our child, if they get a runny nose, can't go to daycare for the next two weeks. Like, I don't look at them as if they've uh, ruined my life. <laughs> That's basically where I'm at. Okay, I'm ready. 
I should not have done that. Hitbox pornography? You say this until people send their kids to daycare with the chicken pox? Why do you always have to go straight to absurdity? Obviously, you know, if you have chicken pox or like the bubonic plague or scabies or mumps or something like that, should probably be at home. If your kid's got like a runny nose or something, I'm like, I don't know. I also feel like I, I need to acknowledge my own bias. I should not be standing in the blue. Good to know. That's not slurp juice. This boss is not that hard, man. Didn't that used to happen? I'm not... How old do you think I am? I'm not advocating for a return to the 1910s, okay? But I think that my own personal bias right now is like all the kids in daycare that are older than my daughter... They get sick for like half a day and then they're fine, but because she's so much younger, she gets taken out of commission a lot longer. So they're sending their kids to daycare, spreading the disease to us, and then my daughter's, you know, cultivating it for like two weeks. So it, it screws up our life more than theirs, but of course everybody also thinks that it's always harder for them. First off, well done. I disparage this message. Is an easy boss. You just upvoted it? I don't think so. I don't think so. Every time my coworker brings his two-year-old to work, I get sick from it. Very true. I don't doubt it. I mean, the first two times I got sick on this cold and flu cycle, it was like one to one. Like, saw my nieces was fine for two days, and then on the third day, I was like, I think I have, uh, the plague? I think I have the plague. Just a big arena, man. Every other one since that point has just been, like, you know, daycare. I see a kid, like, leave the daycare and have, like, snot all over his mouth, and I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> there we go. I'll just gesture real quick if you're cool with that. And then the dad is like, I don't think he's sick. I think he's just, like... I think he's just tired, and I'm like, yeah, okay. I've used that line. Piece of shit. She's not sick, she just has a fever because she's teething, okay? You wouldn't understand. Okay, well, like, are we- we're done with this area now. This is a cool area. Why don't you take me to, um... Well, let's level up, don't get me wrong. Why don't you take me to the deep sea offro well, though? I'm not hungover, I just didn't sleep well last night. Okay, we take more. I'm not worried about the hammer, honestly. I'm not sweating it. I already got a hammer. You explode, I remember that, you explode. Help. Now this is farming. Best farming spot in the game right there? Uh, historically, these guys haven't been that bad. <laughs> but this guy is... He looks like the Iron Man 2 movie poster with this much blue and orange. Hey, come on down, please. Thank you. That will never hit. Owns. 
You don't remember when every movie was blue and orange? We do? Nobody knows when every movie was blue and orange. We do, you talk about it every stream. You literally never, that's the party meme. You literally never shut up about it. That's fine, I'll just wild strikes you then. Worth. You say it in the past tense? Well, the only movie I've watched recently is Margin Call. That movie is not really blue and orange. Spiked Palisade Shield. Whoa! There is another? For uh, 1,000 channel points, who said this iconic movie quote? There is another. Yoda, that is incorrect. It was Frank Oz as Yoda. Yoda did not say the line. He's not real. Frank Oz isn't real either? But he's very real. He's real and he's fabulous. Anyway, so that's my thoughts on the current public health epidemic. Any askers in chat? No. Okay, fair enough. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Okay, I should not have done that. I'm a political streamer now. I keep beating the drum. It's so controversial, I shouldn't even say it. I might get banned. People should be more understanding of one another. There, I ripped the band-aid off. Instead, people will be like, you know, they'll actually hold a take like anyone who drinks chocolate milk might as well be like two years old. Like, it's so rude. That's my take, by the way. Is this Alexander? Angelica? Hold on, is this the backside of the Colosseum we couldn't get to, or couldn't get inside earlier? This is not Alexander, he's freaking huge, man. Like, Alexander was like... He was big, he wasn't this big. First off, giant sword, then seek summoning. God ahead. You know what? You make me laugh? Give you one of those. Five ten versus six foot. I this is five ten versus seven foot, man. I already told you what I think I am. A god. You should look for a summon sign on the hill. Okay, a red summon sign on the hill. You scare me? You scare me. You scare me. Um, let's start with this guy, the Knight of the Great Jar. Now, Dark Souls 1 PvP strats, wait for him to come out of the ground. Stand behind him. Okay, that did not work. He's tanky. Patched, patched. What the heck, he's Seath? That's a problem. Yep. <laughs> he's very tanky, okay. Oh, by the way, I'm also frostbitten. Hmm. Casino.
We must have missed a grace on the way. I'm at least going to try to get my souls back, then get me out of here. There's no grace closer? What the hell? We can at least get the map then. Nope. Everybody hates Caleb. Is this a joke about everybody loves Raymond or is this the truth? There's nothing here except this challenge. Okay. With that in mind, what a shot. I will kill this guy then. And I'll give it one more try. And then do the run back to get my runes. And then give it one more try. And then do the run back to get my runes. And then give it one more try. Be staggered. Men will literally just get heavy attacked in the shins and not get staggered. Stop this. Stop it! There we go. many souls? 1700 honestly for an enemy that easy that's kind of sick men will literally put all their levels in strength instead of going to therapy you talking about somebody that doesn't sound like anybody I know do you get staggered when your daughter attacks your shins she doesn't really attack my shins, but honestly, like, a lot of being a dad. Okay, it's a different guy. Um, is just obscuring... Oh, I could take you, no sweat. Is just obscuring your power level. Like, I never have to... I, I think I told you this already, but she's been learning how to high-five. So I've been hitting her with, like, one out of... Well, let's do it this way. Three out of five high five attempts, I just do a nice gentle high five. One out of five high five attempts, I hit her with the too slow and the the pantomimed uh oh no. The pantomimed uh, hair slick. And then one out of five, I try to give her like a a high five that's like a bit of a slapper. So it makes like a nice sound. And she loves that one. But one time I gave her the high five with the with the slapper. And just from high fiving her at like, you know, 10% of the possible force I could generate, it knocked her over backwards. But she got up, and as soon as she fell down, she was like, I'm okay. And I was like, let's go. Alright. I'm gonna get my souls and get the hell out of here. This guy's strong. Like, this is, like, me versus that guy is, like, my baby versus me. But babies, like, they can do some serious damage, man. Like, my kid, whenever she walks, she doesn't like to walk on the floor. She likes to walk on, like, whatever objects are around. She has, like, an inverted idea of the best way to walk. That's bad. <laughs> okay, I guess I won't worry about my souls too much. 
So like if my legs are on the floor, she'll put all of her weight onto like my foot. And sometimes my foot will be like sideways. She'll just balance all of her weight on the edge of my foot. I can feel the little bones in there going like, you know, crack, 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 crack. I'm like, ah, what are you doing? But I can't move my foot. If I move my foot, she'll fall down. I'm like, what are you doing? Take me to Fort Gale North. I can do this. Fort Jail? Um, Fortnite, actually. Behold, Fortnite. Wow, you just killed your own squad, dude. I bet you feel real smart. Maybe if you had a window in that thing, you wouldn't be so bad at it. What, what the hell is your problem? Did you end up beating that witch or today in less than 10 tries? Oh no, who's gonna tell them? You may notice that your channel point uh, balance is a little lower than it used to be. I think it took me 12 tries. But even that, like, I, I didn't think we took a, an outrageously long time on that boss. If anything, I know how this sounds. The best fights in Souls, though, are the ones that are the hardest without being bullshit. Like, Godric, hard, not bullshit. Very fun. Uh, Margit, hard, not bullshit. Very fun. Something, something, Ishin. I can't remember the, the superlatives. Difficult boss fight. Very fun. Bed of Chaos. Not very fun. Toot. This dude really went toot. Can you believe this? What about second owl father? Honestly, like... Just me being genuine with you? I'd need to do a second Sekiro playthrough at some point. I've only played it through one time. And I didn't... I mean, that's one of those games where, like... You know, to get the true ending... You have to tell, like, an NPC that her hair looks nice... 20 minutes in. Otherwise, like, the true ending is gated from you. So I, I, I gotta... I gotta go back and see that. It's like trying to figure out how to go on a date with Barrett at Golden Saucer instead of Tifa or Eris. Can you just chill out a little bit? Favorite boss fight so far? I mean, I gotta give it to Margit for now. Godric was also very cool. Without being a hater, because this I, this is the truth in Souls in general. Renala was also pretty sweet. Every other boss so far, I'm kind of just like, you know. They're, they're the forgettable Souls bosses. That like, if you were doing like a Sporkle quiz, there's a 50-50 chance you would even remember fighting them. Much less their name. But we are, I don't know, what, like five seconds into the game? We're like 1% of the way through the game right now, so we got a long way to go. <laughs> what about the watchdog? I like the watchdog just because he looks so funny. And I, I think it was intentional that they called him a watchdog even though he's a cat. Cats can be watchdogs too. Go brush your shoulders off. Why not? <laughs> Owned. That watchdog is not a cat. 
It's a cat. Look at it. It has cat ears. It looks... It, not only does it look like a cat, it looks like a hairless cat, which is like the most cat-like entity that's ever existed. Dog ahead. A statue of America. Try right. Okay, maybe I'll try right. Thanks for your help. Thanks for your help. Hey! Check in! Anybody know that reference? Any Canadian Family Feud, uh, Family Feud Canada viewers out there? Well, I do want to see that, don't get me wrong, but... That's a classic Family Feud Canada clip. They're in sudden death. Name a food associated with Popeye. Instant buzz. Lady goes, she's so excited. <clears throat> Chicken! And she's even doing like a little dance. And then it pans over to her family who are just like dumbfounded. It's so good. A warming stone. How about that? I don't want to fight this guy yet. I'm sure there's going to be a statue of Grace around here. Somewhere. How many points was it? It got ze It was sudden death, so, like, it got zero. And they lost as a result, because the other lady was like, spinach. Was it wrong? It was wrong. It's like, you know, it's, it, in case you're wondering why, it's the Popeye versus Popeye's conundrum that is that has tripped you up as it did her as well. Popeye loves spinach. Popeye's is a fried chicken restaurant. a bad survey question? It's a fine survey question. Just because you got it wrong doesn't mean the test was designed poorly. Nobody's perfect. <laughs>